Hey guys, it is NCS Fan 001 here for another one of those weekly trophy list updates. Today's date is Monday, June the 24th of 2024. So this will cover the week of June the 17th through the 23rd of 2024. This was a semi-slightly productive week overall. I mean, trophies were earned, a game was completed, another game was started. So, I mean, there was a little bit of progress at least. But a lot of the time was spent uh, dealing with workplace stuff because if you guys tuned into some of the streams like the one on this past Friday and even on my Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, there is some in absolutely insane shit that is happening at work right now. And yeah, I'm going to have more updates for that hopefully this coming week. These videos get recorded on Sunday night, so I won't really know until like Monday's over necessarily, but... Should get some more information soon. So first off, I wanted to point out, apparently the Power Wash Simulator Alice in Wonderland DLC has a July the 2nd release date. So that's what, like two weeks? So that's good to know. That's just what I heard, though. I don't know if that's 100% true or not. Fallout 76, the Skyline Valley update is completed and our trophy guide is resubmitted. I'm still a little bit surprised that it got rejected the first time, but I think we fixed everything. So hopefully we'll be having that big ultimate guide out very soon. So in terms of actual trophy progress, though, we have three games to talk about. So the first one is The Walking Dead, the Telltale Definitive series. So with this game, I streamed it once in the past week, and we got through the first two and a half episodes of Season 3. So at this point, there's just two and a half more episodes of Season 3, and we will have all of the Season 3 trophies done. This season, I barely remember any of it, and the circle button hasn't been horribly antagonistic to me so far. It's been... It's been tolerable so far. It hasn't been anything, like, insane like some of the previous seasons. Though I'm still very sad at what happens to Kenny with this compared to maybe the other endings in Season 1. Or one of the other endings in Season 2, I mean. Not Season 1, of course. I don't know why I was thinking Season 1. But yeah, so the next live stream I do will probably be finishing Season 3 of The Walking Dead. And then we will jump into a brand new game. But before we get into that brand new game, I will also say that with The Walking Dead, it should be one more stream for Season 3, and then probably two streams per Season 4, because the episodes are a little bit longer, so probably like two episodes per stream for two streams for four. So in terms of more important progress made this week, we have Fallout 4, which is now 100% completed. So that is every Fallout game completed at this point once again, back to 100%. I do still, of course, very much hope that we will get either a remake or remaster of games like Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, or even the original Fallout games someday. But, I mean, I don't really know. I, I like to think it'll be a thing that happens, but honestly, who knows at this point? I mean, New Vegas, I don't think it'll ever happen because it was made by Obsidian, so I don't really see that occurring, but maybe the other ones would have a chance at it. I've heard rumors of Fallout 3, something with Fallout 3 coming out this fall, but I don't know how true any of that is. So we can look back at the entire trophy list today. So you have several trophies right here that go through the molecular level that are all story-related and unmissable. After that, you have the nuclear option, which is the ending you get with either the Brotherhood, Railroad, or Minutemen. So you'll get that in any of those three options. Then you have four Institute-specific trophies, though you can actually do the first three while also still working with the Railroad, which is pretty nice. And then Nuclear Family is the ending specifically for the Institute, because I'm pretty sure they're not canonically the winners of this whole whatever you want to call it in the Commonwealth. Then you have the Minutemen specific quests. Joining them is pretty tough to miss because that's pretty early on in the game. Taking independence is when you retake the castle and Old Guns occurs a few days later when you loot the rest of the castle for all of its supplies and its armory. Then you have the Brotherhood of Steel. All three of these trophies are tied to the Brotherhood. These are all tied to basically doing everything up until you actually go into the Institute. And then you have your three Railroad Trophies, which go all the way through destroying the Prudwin, which is the Brotherhood of Steel ship, but just before you actually go and raid the Institute itself. So the nice thing about this game is that if you do Brotherhood of Steel as your main file, you can complete the game working with the Brotherhood, and you can also still work with the Minutemen to do their quest through that Old Guns quest. 
And if you do all of that, you'll get all the Brotherhood and all of the Minutemen trophies as well as the nuclear option. Then you reload a save from the start of the molecular level quest, and when you get there, you will play with both the Institute and the Railroad working pretty much hand in hand because you kind of have to do that anyway. And once you do that, you'll end up getting all the way through Rocket's Red Glare, but you don't have to end the game with the Railroad because you will have already done so with the Brotherhood. So at that point, you can just go ahead and finish your playthrough, siding with the Institute, get those last one or two trophies done, and you're good to go with the story trophies. And about half the list is story related, which is kind of nice, actually. Sanctuary is technically a side quest, but it's a, basically a Minutemen quest. It's when you build some stuff in Sanctuary as your first sort of settlement. Ally with three settlements, that's pretty simple. You can do that while working with the Minutemen. You'll actually get that along the way to taking independence and old guns. Then, of course, we have Benevolent Leader, which was probably the most infamous trophy in the original version of the game on PS4. But this trophy is actually a lot easier now because people have found other methods for it that work really well. The main method involves building five cat cages and a few other things. And if you do it that way, you can actually knock this out very, very quickly. The cat cages do require you to have the Wasteland Workshop DLC and you have to get a lot of soft shell Mirelurk meat, which is not particularly common but it's by far the fastest, easiest, and just honestly simplest way to do this trophy. There are other methods for it, but that was definitely the method that worked very well for me on the PS5 version. Ten side quests, you get quite a few just for starting the game in this version because of the Creation Club content, and then just any other ten or any other like seven or eight, which will probably include stuff from the Minutemen. You should have no problem with this. Miscellaneous objectives for this one, you're going to want to grind this out during your Brotherhood of Steel file. You're just going to buy a lot of Vertibird grenades, and you're going to call in Vertibirds, get on the Vertibird, and take it somewhere, and once you get off, it counts as a miscellaneous objective, and just rinse and repeat that until you do all 50. 1,000 resources for crafting. This is extremely simple. Just scrap like everything in Sanctuary, and you might just get it just from doing that otherwise just drop off a bunch of other junk in your workshop and you'll be fine 50 locks and 50 terminals are very typical for fallout games the lock picking is very easy and there's no way to break locks in this game like there was in fallout 3 or new vegas terminals you just hack them as normal i don't think this is missable because i think that you just get locked out temporarily in this game at least that's how 76 works. I think this game works the same way, but I could be wrong on that, so don't uh, don't quote me on that one. Then the 50 weapons mods, you can just do this by apparently taking a muzzle break on and off. Apparently works perfectly fine for this, so that's actually really nice to know if that's actually true. Craft 100 items. This is best done by crafting jet from fertilizer and plastic at a chemistry workbench. So that basically means that you're just injecting fertilizer into your body, which is probably very healthy, but I'm not a doctor, so who knows. Recruit five separate companions. There's like 15 total with all the DLCs, so this isn't really that much of a problem. Reaching maximum relationship level. You might get this naturally if you manage to spare dance during one of the later Brotherhood quests. But I actually got it with Preston because I never went back to dance, sadly, which I really probably should have done. But I never really did that, so I ended up just getting it with Preston, which is unfortunate given what happens in the Nuka World DLC. 100 workshop items, that's about as self-explanatory as it gets. Just build a world of fence posts. Rest in peace, Men Squad, that'll be our forever tribute to you, as long as we can throw a bucket and a fork on top. Holotape games, there are five or six of these in the game, but you can get one out of Vault 111, so that's the easiest place to get it. But there's also one in the Museum of Freedom from the early part of the story. Giant creatures are a little bit less set in stone in this game than they are in Fallout 76. They're a little bit more random where they spawn. But there are several places where you can get either a Mire Alert Queen or a Behemoth to spawn. You just have to deal the killing blow. It's not missable or anything. You can get them to respawn in certain locations, but not a lot of locations. Speaking of locations, discover 100 of them. That's a very typical Fallout trophy. It's very easy. There's well, well over 100 in this game, so it shouldn't be a problem. 20 magazines, just find them throughout the world. You're going to need 10 to finish the DLCs anyway, so just find 10 more in the main wasteland and you'll get this trophy. 
the Grenader Mine while pickpocketing. This was, of course, the final trophy I got. Stick it in Preston's pants or anyone else you don't like, and you will get this trophy. Except for the fact that you actually do need to take a specific perk for it in this game, which I didn't realize at first, but there is a specific perk you have to take in this game to be able to do the reverse pickpocket. 300 people and 300 creatures are pretty self-explanatory, and they will both probably come naturally while going for the 100%. The creatures should come naturally just by going for the Platinum. The 300 people might take the DLC to do, but it's basically unmissable. Home Run, this is what you get for running around the bases in Diamond City. It's very simple. Touchdown, this requires you to be killed by a mini nuke. You can either get hit by one, fired by an enemy, or you can fire one at your own feet, and that will also count. You have to find the 20 vault Tech bobbleheads in the game. There are exactly 20. Just follow a collectible guide for them and you should have no problem. Most of them are pretty easy to get to. One or two of them require a little bit of quest work to do, but for the most part, they're pretty easy to get. Then you have to reach level 50 total, which you will get easily while working through all of the DLCs. And then you have to decide on the fate of the Commonwealth, which is an unmissable story trophy you get the first time you finish the game with any faction. So the Platinum Trophy is not particularly hard, and there are easier ways to do Benevolent Leader now, but it is probably still a solid, like, 40 to 50-ish hour Platinum Trophy, especially if you... It would be even longer if you don't do Benevolent Leader in a more efficient manner. Automatron is a very straightforward DLC. Three unmissable story-related trophies up top. The 10 robot mods is unmissable. You'll get this just by finishing the DLC. And then just building 10 of them is pretty simple. Just build the robot workbench in any of your settlements and then just build some robot mods. Wasteland Workshop, this DLC is a broken mess. First off, you have to build every cage type, which is a massive grind on materials because you need a lot of really random materials to do it. And then these other two trophies are very buggy and are not guaranteed to unlock, even if you seemingly do the requirements. So have fun with that. Far Harbor is a pretty solid DLC. You have five story-related trophies. Everything through the silver is story-related, but the Cleansing the Land mission is actually missable if you make certain decisions, so do keep in mind that this trophy is missable. And then you just have a few other miscellaneous trophies. The Islander's Almanac, there are five of these magazines throughout the world, so just look up a guide for them and you're good to go. 30 Far Harbor Sea Creatures, this is all of those new things like the Hermit Crabs and the Anglers and stuff like that. Just kill 30 of them, you'll get this trophy no problem. 20 locations, there's like 30 plus locations here, so this shouldn't be a problem. 3 workshops, there are 4 total, but apparently this trophy is also missable if you were to detonate the nuke inside of the Children of Adam base. If you do that, apparently that voids this trophy, so just make sure you do this before you go pretty far into the story. Then just cook any of the new recipes, that's pretty self-explanatory, just go to a cooking station and cook something based off of a creature from this area. Contraptions is by far the easiest DLC, assign Preston or any other annoying settler to a pillory and you'll get this trophy. Displaying a weapon, an armor, and a power armor is very straightforward, you just have to be able to build the displays, which doesn't require a whole lot of material so it shouldn't be a problem. 100 objects from your builders. This one will take like half an hour or so of just waiting around your settlement for it to work, but it's not difficult. Just build like steel balls or plastic pumpkins or something very simple. Vault Tech Workshop, this is another easy DLC. You just have to unlock all the build areas of Vault 88, which requires you to activate three or four workbenches throughout this just massive, massive area to build in, which I'm sure the people have built like crazy stuff down there. I kind of want to look it up now. Then, this is part of the story for the DLC, so once a settler comes in, give them the Vault Suit and the Pit Boy, and this trophy will unlock. And then finally, you have to become the Overseer, which you can either do by finishing the Vault 88 questline, or just by shooting the Overseer in the head will also work perfectly fine. That's actually what I had to do because the guy I had in the vault would not get on the bike and I thought it was bugged, so I just saved and then killed the Overseer and got the trophy. And finally, we have Nuka World, so this one is the most complicated of all the DLCs. So you have four unmissable story-related trophies here at the bottom, so those are all unmissable, story-related, nothing to worry about with those. But then, you have six other miscellaneous trophies. You have to finish 12 of the miscellaneous raider quests, or not miscellaneous, side quests. And it's quite time-consuming because you have to keep going back into the actual Commonwealth Wasteland to do them. Scab magazines, there are five total. I actually found four just by basically exploring normally, and then there was just one that I missed, which I was able to find not too 
Not too far away from anywhere else, so it wasn't much of a problem. The 20 different flavors of Nuka-Cola, you have to find the recipes first, and a few of them are in pretty obscure places. Supposedly, any bugs related to this have thankfully been fixed, so there shouldn't be a problem with it this time around. Because in the PS4 version, it was possible for certain magazines to, like, glitch out of the map or something, which is awful. The eight raider camps in the Commonwealth. When you do this, Preston will become very mad at you, so it's a good thing that you were siding with the Brotherhood on your main file. Because I sided with the Minutemen on my main file on the PS4, so you can imagine how pleasant that was to know that Preston was that pissed off after me doing so much for the Minutemen. But anyway, just eight raider camps. You have to actually establish camps. I don't think the supply camps actually count or the settlements that you force to supply the raiders. I don't think those actually count. So just establish eight of them. It's fairly easy to do, but once again, it'll completely tank your Minuteman relationship. So just keep that in mind. This trophy, thankfully, unlocked without any problems on the PS5 version. I had a lot of issues with this on the PS4 version. I ended up doing it with the Nuka Cola, N-E-W-K-A Cola. That was definitely the one that worked the best for this. It's still a little bit finicky. It still feels like you get more than 40 kills until the trophy unlocks. But just basically pop one of the Nuka Colas, kill a few enemies before it runs out, and then rinse and repeat. It's a very kind of annoying grind, and it's best done while you're clearing out all the locations when you have all the, like, blood worms and stuff that's easy to kill versus some of the stuff out in the middle of the wasteland, like the rad scorpions that are much harder to kill. And then, finally, you have to redeem 100,000 tickets at the Nuka Cave. For this, you need to earn 100,000 tickets. You will get up to about 10,000 just by exploring the Nuka World area and just completing the main story. For the rest of them, you are going to need to farm them. You can either do this at the Nuka Cave by playing the Shooting Gallery minigame, or the much more efficient option is to build several of the basketball games and sort of stack them together. There's a way to, to stack all three or even four of them together so that every time you dunk the basketball, it'll be scoring on like three different machines at once, so you'll get three times the tickets pretty much. That's by far the best way to do it. It was a much, much more efficient way to do it than doing it the way that we had to on the PS4 version where you were just doing the shooting gallery or whatever. It's still a massive grind that does not need to exist, but thankfully it's much easier this time around than it was on the PS4. So yeah, that is Nuka World, and that is Fallout 4, and that is all the Fallout games back to 100% completion. Obviously, Fallout 76 still has a few years left in its lifespan, apparently. And I'm surprised we haven't yet gotten an Enclave DLC. I'm almost positive that's going to be a future DLC, so I'm sure we'll get more trophies for it. But otherwise, I think our best hope is to get like either a PS5 version of Fallout 76 or a remake remaster of Fallout 3, maybe. Hell, with our luck, we'll probably get, like, Brotherhood of Steel or something, because I think that was a PS2 game, and with the whole PS2 coming to PS5 collection whole thing that's going on, maybe, I guess we'll have to see. No guarantee it'll have trophies, though, but I will play it if it comes to PS5. Don't get me wrong, I will play it, even if it doesn't have trophies, even though I've heard very bad things about it. And then finally, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Of course, I got the Platinum Trophy like a full year ago almost. Unfortunately, the assholes over at Activision decided to tie Modern Warfare 3's trophies as a DLC for Modern Warfare 2 for some ungodly reason. I have no idea why anyone thought this was a good idea. And apparently Black Ops 6 is going to be another DLC for this Call of Duty, which just once again makes no sense whatsoever. But apparently that's how things are going to work from here on out, so... Within a few years, this game will be five or 600 gigabytes with like 5,000 trophies total or something. So this is probably one of the harder Call of Duty games we've gotten in the last few years. Probably the hardest we've gotten since at least Cold War. So level 55 works between both zombies and multiplayer, so that's not a problem. Xfil once in zombies, that's the only trophies I've done so far. This is not zombies, this is some pathetic excuse for COD zombies, but this is not zombies, it's terrible. Playing one match of it was already terrible enough, and I'm gonna have to play like another 30 hours of it for the other trophies, so... Yeah, I am not looking forward to this grind. The insured weapon, I think, is something that you can get to where you can carry it over between playthroughs or something. I, I don't have any idea how this whole mode works, because it's so dumb. 
Nine perks active at once. I did see some perk machines, so I do kind of have an assumption as to how this is going to work. This one actually seems like it should be fairly easy. Just get in a vehicle and, like, run over 100 zombies probably to get it. That's probably actually pretty easy. Uh, this one, so Tombstone, I guess, is a perk that they're bringing back. And I guess that's what you have to do for it. Revive a player from a different squad because apparently you have different squads of people all playing in the same lobby at once. Even though you can only have three people in your squad. Again, I have no idea how that makes sense. You can pet the doggo. I am excited to pet the doggo. I just don't know how to do it yet. 20 contracts. That's actually pretty simple because I've completed like two so far in that first game. So I understand how to do that. And I understand how this trophy is going to be fairly difficult because the high threat zone... When I was in the medium threat zone, I couldn't even, like, kill the zombies. It took a ton of hits to kill them. And you have to do it in a single round, which is going to kind of suck. So you're going to need to have a good group for that. Act 3, I'm sure I'll get that at some point just by working through it and learning it a little bit. This is the god-awful grindy trophy for this game. But apparently, this trophy actually somewhat auto-pops between versions. It doesn't directly auto-pop, but once you beat it on one version, if you load up the other version and get one more zombie kill, this one unlocks. Which means that the PS4 version would only take like 20 to 30 hours compared to the 50 to 60 that this version will take. So, that is good to know for the future, and it makes me a little bit more willing to do the PS4 version. I'm assuming that that's a boss... And then this is, I don't know why this is a trophy, because you can only have three-person squads, so you have to have two squads work together or something. That makes no sense. And then you have a whole bunch of campaign trophies. Most of the trophies are campaign. I am going to be streaming the campaign. I don't really care about it or know how it's going to work. I'm just going to beat it on veteran first and then go back for miscellaneous trophies. It should make for a semi-interesting video, because I know it's probably going to be absolutely terrible, and I'm not looking forward to it. So, yeah, at least you have that to look forward to now that Fallout 4 is done. We still have a little bit more of The Walking Dead to play, so there's that. All right, so with that, level 865, 4%, 28,205 total trophies, 804 platinums, 5,323 golds, 7,559 silvers, 14,519 bronzes. So, plans for the upcoming week. The next live stream will be The Walking Dead, just to go ahead and finish Season 3 off and just be done with that, because it's the worst season along with Michonne. And then we will start on the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. I will probably continue to work a little bit on Modern Warfare 3 zombie stuff as we move forward. I am not looking forward to it, but I have to do it because, of course, they tied it in as a DLC for a game that I already owned, which is still a scummy, crappy thing that they had to do. But they did it, so it is what it is. And then, in a couple of weeks, we will start up the next Power Wash Simulator DLC. Definitely excited for that because I do love the game. But otherwise, other notices, I guess you could say, the Bugsnax Trophy video is coming along. It's it's not terribly far away from being done. I just didn't have as much time to work on it this week as I wanted to with all the ridiculous workplace crap to talk about. And along with that, the next Fallout lore video is actually coming along quite well. I've tried to speed run that one a little bit more compared to the Ohio one and just try to get this one done a little bit faster. It's going to be a little bit shorter because there isn't quite as much to talk about given the state that I'm talking about next. But I'm actually excited for that because it's a state that's never even been mentioned in the Fallout universe. So I think that could actually be quite interesting. And it's coming along pretty well. I'm like probably 75% of the way done with the script and the research of it. So it's coming along pretty well. I'm not, I'm not too worried about that one. And then otherwise, just getting our Fallout 76 guide published. Hopefully that'll be up in the next couple of days. Our Ultimate Vault Dweller Survival Guide. Hopefully it will somehow get me a ticket to be an extra in Season 2 of the Fallout series. I know that's a very big long shot, but Todd Howard, if you're out there listening to this, please give me a some kind of cameo role or something. And also please honor Midden Squad in Season 2. Please do like a bucket with a fork in it or something to honor him. But otherwise, for this upcoming week, when it comes to streams and such, I probably won't be streaming again until Thursday because I'm going to see the South Park Movies 25th Anniversary special screening on Wednesday night. So I probably won't be back streaming until Thursday, and it'll probably be The Walking Dead. And then Friday and Saturday, we can start suffering through Modern Warfare 3 together. That's going to be so much fun. At least I have you guys there to help me get through it. And also, also, the 701 through 800 video is fully recorded. 
I just need to edit it now, which will take a little while, but it is fully recorded, so a huge chunk of that is done. So I will be trying to prioritize that and get it ready in the very near future. And then with all of this, we're also getting a lot more of these PS2 games onto and PSP games onto PS5. Not all of them have trophies. I'm playing through LEGO Star Wars whenever I have time because I loved this game. I never got the chance to 100% it back in the day because my disc was broken. So I actually couldn't finish the last Super Story. This is apparently the PSP version. I don't know why it didn't get trophies, but it didn't. This game is supposed to be a pretty quick and easy Platinum, and so is this one. And it's supposed to be really good. And I've also got games that I've started to stockpile for the next uh, Platinum Trophy Dumpster Dive video. All sorts of just random crappy games that we can play. I also got to do a stream of Life of Black Tiger at some point. That should be that should be something because it's not technically shovelware, but it's also like one of the worst games ever made for PS4 that wasn't meant to be a shovelware type of game. So yeah, thank you guys for tuning in, and if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave me a like, subscribe, and ring the bell if you haven't done so already. And I will see y'all later this week for more content and hopefully more workplace drama. I will find out if I still have a job after Monday, so see you guys then.